Hi and welcome to our first tutorial on ceramics and we're going to be talking about the pinch pot but the first thing I'd like to make you aware of is cleanliness in my room with clay it can get really messy I do expect you to try your best to keep things clean and when you clean up uh, your tables you need to wipe them down with water there will be some residue left from the last class and you rinse your stuff out in the sink here uh, you can notice that there is water in there, but there's a pipe and when we turn the water on to clean our tools off Then the water just goes down in the pipe and the clay will sit in the bottom of the sink until I clean it out when we're all finished uh, Okay, so we'll have a 10 minutes to clean up at the end of each class and you'll need to use the sponges to clean your table also there are aprons in the classroom so let me go back over here. The aprons are in that green tote right there. You're welcome to use an apron. Try to tuck them back in when you're done. And here's our clay working table. So I will have a number of tools here for you. You'll notice in the, in, by the sink there are uh, boards like this uh, or by the sink in the, in the white booth and they need to be cleaned off and put back when you're done. There's also different clay working tools in here that you're welcome to as long as you clean them off and put them back. And um, I will be talking right now about how to start your pinch pot, okay? So I have some clay here. Uh, they come in these great big bags and uh, I use this wire just to cut the clay off. So I already have some clay cut. We want to keep these bags closed so that the clay will stay moist for the next person. If you don't ever, if you don't use all of your clay, you can put it back in the bag so that the next person can use it. But I use this wire here to cut the clay. Now to start with, we're making a pinch pot. So you're going to take this clay, it's already pretty soft. You can see I can just squish it in my hands. And um, you'll need to wedge it though. Remember the word wedging. We're just gonna smash this and get the air bubbles out of it. And the more you smash it, the more you kind of work those molecules into going one direction. Now it is possible to overwork clay. Uh, you can add some water just by getting your hands wet. Have a bowl like this with some water in it and just keep adding it to your clay. You can use one of these boards to take this over to your table and uh, start wedging your clay. This will stick to the board though, so you have to be careful. You can use these to scrape it off if you want to. Um, but this is a basic pinch pot. All right, so I'm gonna make it as round as I can, and then I'm going to stick my thumb into this. Now I'm going to be slow, I'm not just going to do it fast. Inside of this, uh, I can feel how close my fingers are to each other. You can feel, if you um, just imagine the distance down, down there, um, how close you're getting. Now we want to make this thumb thick or pinky thin. We don't want to go any thinner or thicker than that. And so this is the earliest form of uh, using a potter's wheel because you're going in circles. The potter's wheel spins and you form the clay perfectly circular as you go, but we are gonna have to be the potter's wheel. So you're spinning this in your hand and down at the bottom you're just pinching this until it's the right shape. You want this symmetrical. You want it the same thickness consistently throughout. So I'm just turning this in a circle pinching just at the bottom. The top is still thick. I'm not even pinching the top right now. So I work the bottom until I'm happy and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same thickness. And then I work up just a little bit higher and start working that. Now I can't force this because clay will crack if I force it, but I'm just gently going circular around pinching this and I can go back and fix places if I feel like it's not 
thick enough or thin or it's too thin and I keep working now I've only gone up halfway and I'm not done yet but I could show you what it looks like inside if I've done it correct now I could tap the bottom just to make it flat um, I could cut this open and show you a section and you'd see that this is really thick here and it's thinner down here um, but this pinch pot needs to be pinky thin or thumb thick what I would like you to do as your project is I would like you to create a teapot so your assignment for this one this is the only one I'm really really specific about what you make you need to learn how to scratch and slip so there are elements of this that you're going to have to add clay to so a pinch pot teapot uh, you need a spout you need a handle and you need a foot some kind of way for it to stand flat on the ground uh, you can be creative with this you know it can take on the shape of an animal or some other uh, thing uh, or you can just do a classical design of a pinch of a, of a teapot now I've been working on this as I go I don't want this much clay for this so I'm going to cut it off like this and you can see my pinch pot here it's pretty uniform it's thumb thick and uh, now I can take tools and I can smooth this out if I want um, I can I can uh, do different things to stylize it um, but right now I'm more concerned that it has a spout so a simple spout would be something like this right I just leave an impression somewhere for liquid to pour out now if that's too thin I need to kind of smash it back. I could get some water and smooth it out, and that would be okay. It doesn't have to be flat on top, but if you if you shape it, you need to be sure that kinds of this stuff is smoothed out. You don't have a bunch of extra little burrs hanging off. You remember, when this stuff dries, it becomes crystallized, and actually, it's like a little bit like glass. It could cut you, so if you've got a bunch of burrs on there, that could be an issue. Now. I also want to create a handle. So I taught you another term and that was a coil. Here is a coil. That's just a simple handle, uh, but I want to scratch and slip this on here. So I want it to go here, but if I just press that on there and it dries, it's just gonna fall off. So I take a needle, some shape like this, and I scratch my clay. I want my slip remember slip to go down inside of the clay grooves when I put this handle on you could do lots of different kinds of handles you could make this flat instead of round but this is slip you can see how um, kind of slimy it is it's liquefied clay and I'm going to literally just slime that the scratches on both sides and uh, get that cement down in there. Now, you could wash your hands off, but part of this is that you learn how to deal with the mess. So I'm gonna push the clay down, or the slip down into that section. And I can take my tool and smooth that seam out. This is how clay stays together. This is how it'll stay together when it dries. Uh, and then if it doesn't dry in the shape you kept it, uh, it'll stay that way. If it, doesn't, uh, if it dries in a different position than you wanted it, it'll stay that way. Um, okay, so now it has a spout and it has a handle. Now I'm not gonna be able to hold this up right now as it's wet, uh, but I need a foot. And so I can make another coil I can literally just make a bunch of little balls and scratch and slip those little uh, spheres as feet. But I'm gonna make a foot like this and I'll scratch and slip it and just put it on the bottom like that. So I need to scratch and slip and then uh, I can put some designs. You know, this, this thing has some, you can see little teeth on it. I can make designs on here but I need to know this is yours. By the time you're done putting designs on it, I need to know it's yours. So 
Somewhere maybe on the bottom, you can put your initials, scratch your initials. If you can get your period on there, period one. Somewhere where I'm not going to see it in the design. Later after we fire this, after we fire this, we'll put it, uh, we'll take it out of the kiln, it'll be bisque ware. This will be pink or a light uh, color. It'll be white possibly. And then we'll paint it with glaze and we will, uh, then you can take it home after that. But in order to get a grade on this, I'm gonna grade these when they're greenware before we put them in the kiln. I need this to dry. Before I put it in the kiln, I will grade it. So I can't grade it unless I see your initials. Actually, you could take a picture of this and put it on canvas and then I know you've got it too. But if you want it back, I've gotta have your initials. So uh, that's a crash course on a teapot. It's basic. Now you could do something like this where maybe you want a spout that is rounded like this. I scratch and slip the top like that and I have a hole in it. I just put that tool in there to help create a spout. I've seen students make uh, nice long trunks like that. I've seen them put ears, maybe two handles for ears like an elephant. Um, but be creative with that and have fun with it. So that is your basics of wedging, keeping it pinky thin or thumb thick. Don't get much thinner than that and, um, or thicker. And uh, so clean up when you're done, wash your tools off in the sink, put them away where they belong, put your apron away. If you're saving this for another day, then you need to put your object in a bag and carefully seal it up and leave it in your box. You don't want air to dry this out overnight, okay? So I'll give you a bag and you can keep that in your box until the next day and then you can work on it some more.